Hello, welcome back to Blend Switch Live. In this episode, I want to share this geometry notes example that's making use of uh, geometry proximity nodes. So, this node is actually uh, pretty powerful, um, something you need to keep in mind. And in this example, we basically have like a, like a grid. And the grid is creating this kind of uh, formations uh, of some sort, like maybe like a mountain. Um, that's being generated on the fly based on this curve okay okay actually this curve so the curve if it gets into the proximity of the grid will actually generate this kind of mountain okay so that's the idea the curve is still alive like a live object you can select it modify it and the rock formations will sort of adapt to it. And the setup is really, really quite simple. So we start with a grid. Um, we adjust the grid size and vertices uh, resolutions. The resolution itself will actually give a different result depending on the details. Uh, we have this merge by distance, dual mesh, and extrude mesh. That's why we have these interesting looking shapes of mountains. Uh, however, they are all being affected by selections. And the selection is, is something that's uh, affected by geometry proximity. So, all right, let's, let's study this a little bit. So the curve is outside, outside of the plane. We can bring it inside. And this grid, I can uh, just easily replace the curve. Okay, so there, let's just sim use the basic one for now. And I can make the curve cyclic or non-cyclic. Okay, um, so it, uh, like I said, it comes in two, pla two flavor for geometry proximity. The first one is probably the simple one. So I can resample the curve, first of all. And I, I use curve to mesh and I can use this circle to control the radius of like the mountain that goes around the path. So it could be useful like a, like for the, like a fence or something. <clears throat> and uh, I can actually disconnect that so we have just something that's following the curve itself or something with about like a inner and outer boundary so that's using the edges of the curve when you're using the curve make sure that this as instance is not being selected okay it should be off and whether you want to, to use original or relative it's up to you but I'm using relative because by doing that we can move our curve. Okay, we can actually yeah, scale as well. So back to this guy. Uh, if we just take a look at the the curve that's using geometry proximity, the curve itself is looking like this. Okay, so based on the distance, uh, it's using geometry proximity and finding the distance. The second, the second uh, curve is this. It's using the points to volume and volume to mesh. So this is totally up to you. It's very similar. So you can either use the top one or the bottom one, whichever that's more efficient. Okay. So the geometry proximity is kind of working in an in interesting way. So you, you don't need to use transfer or capture attributes. There's a transfer attribute and there's capture attributes. This is also super useful. You can use one of these to get the geometry proximity, but geometry proximity is handling it for you. Okay. So 
based on uh, by using these nodes you can find the distance between the curve and the final objects as a result you have this distance that you can compare using these nodes and you can use that to control um, extrusions and in this case like how how much we want to uh, yeah merge by distance or extrude mesh so it's like a, become like a selections like I said it's very simple and trivial but still can be useful and then you can also use uh, based on this distance you can use map range and float curve to affect the scaling uh, let's unplug that plug this in uh, I don't know if I don't know if this is super obvious but yeah there it, it has some kind of effect maybe you can reverse it Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. Any, anyway, you 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 play around with that idea with the offset scale. Oh, okay. Yeah. This might be more obvious okay right so yeah that's basically the example I want to show you it's a uh, it's pretty basic but you can perhaps uh, use the same idea so if you have if you work in the 3d this is just like a simple flat grid you can also apply this on the 3d objects let's try this yeah you see And it's pretty fast and interactive, which is pretty cool. So let's say you have like a donut shaped mountain based on that curve or another one that's being defined by yeah, being defined by this curve. adjust the curve okay, the other curve is looking like this like a snake but you can maybe just delete everything and just draw smiley face or you know like write write something but you see, you see it's doing the triangulations and dual mesh on top of this plane objects set this uh, surface so you can define like a mountain areas okay so yeah this is super basic and something you can improve yourself you can use it in different scenes, but hopefully you find it useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you.